Behind me, the biggest ski jump in the world. And next to me, the car that could probably get up there if I wanted it to. Unfortunately, they explicitly forbade us to do something as stupid as that. However, the uh, Suzuki SX4 S-Cross is quite a capable off-roader. Uh, how capable you can see our test of the Suzuki Vitara, which is quite uh, similar to this. However, this is a bit more of a city, more of a family car, so we're going to do a more city-like test. I know what you're going to say. If it's all-wheel drive, it's not a city car, but should be used in the mud. But people have long now wanted bigger SUVs, so crossovers which they can take to the shops and drive their kids to school with. If it also has all-wheel drive, it gives it prestigiousness to brag to your neighbor with. The beauty of the Suzuki SX4 S-Cross is that it can do both. Comfortable city driving to the shops, as well as to get down into the nitty-gritty of mud, snow and light off-roading with its drive and agility. First things first, I like the looks of this car, which might seem like it's small at first, but if I park it next to my 23-year-old family sedan, it's actually pretty huge. Suzuki is chic at the front as well as the back, where it has nice rear lights. LED headlights can be yours with a premium package starting at 20,000 euros. The SX4 has a respectable boot, although don't expect to stuff a full wardrobe in there. You can put smaller objects into the shallow space underneath. The inside reminded me of the Suzuki Vitara. It's similarly practical, with quality materials and some hard plastics on surfaces like the doors or the center console. The test model sported all-wheel drive, which is included in the 21,000 euro package. The model in the video also has navigation, which is in the elegance package for 22,500 euros. The full bells and whistles package for 26,000 euros with the manual or 29,000 euros for the automatic transmission also includes this big panoramic roof, which can be opened. You also get leather-wrapped heated seats, which are quite comfortable. The 1.4-liter petrol engine with 103 kilowatts is surprisingly nippy and lively. The automatic gearbox will make traffic jams less of a strain on your left leg, which would otherwise be constantly pressing the clutch. Consumption will be around 6 liters per 100 kilometers. With very economical driving, this will go down, with a manual even more so. So now, if we think about this price of the car and what you get for it, you get so much leather seats, and I'm not talking about just partially leather seats, they're fully clad in leather, uh, front and back. You've got an automatic transmission, heated seats, you've got a flappy paddle gearbox, uh, or well, flappy paddles, which some of the badges will charge you 100, 200 euros extra just for that. You've got an instrument cluster that's quite interesting with the blue and red colors. You've got the infotainment screen with navigation. So you can't really fault this car then for having some, you know, harder plastics here and there, even though they're quality. So then you think about it, why would you even want a bigger, more expensive car? 
Okay, it's true the tested model with all the extras costed 29,000 euros, but you can get the automatic transmission with the 21,000 euro package. All wheel drive is there for the same money if you opt for the manual. Whichever package you choose though, you'll be buying a good looking, comfortable car.